Hey, Chris, uh, I know you had to take a pass on going to Tokyo, um, but I want to ask you that, that first trip when you played there your rookie year in the world. So, was that have much meaning to you looking back? Uh, I mean, you have a lot of friendships, it seems like, with guys on that team. Did they form there and uh, just make you want to keep going back and doing this again with those guys? You're talking about 06? Yes, sir. We lost. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. We lost. Uh, <clears throat> that was a hard trip. We would, went to Seoul, I think. I think we went to... Oh, man. Yeah, but uh, that was, that was a, a, a fun team. Um, a, a lot of really good guys. Uh, Joe Johnson, uh, obviously, Braun, Melo, D. That's when we really uh, got close. Um, I've been talking to Book a lot about his experience coming up, and it's so cool to hear how excited he is about it. You know, rightfully so, as he should be. There's uh, not too many greater honors than representing your country, you know, and um, hopefully we can, you know, handle business here and he can go get him a gold medal. Yeah. Steve on the right. Hi, Chris. Um, Manny just said, I mean, he hasn't delved too much into your team's success on the road this season, which is the league's best. But he did give some credit to you and, you know, how you set a tone. And, and I'm just curious what you think in terms of doing well on the road. I mean, how much of it is in the arena in the moment, handling a game, how much of it is work habits, you know, in between, or and how much of it is all that other time? That yeah, you're, you're I feel like on. there's a, a lot of athletes out there that'll tell you they like playing on the road. I mean, I, I love our home crowd, but I also love playing on the road. Just always been like that my whole career. Um, when you go on the road, it's just you and your guys, it's just you and the, the team, that, the people that travel with you, you know, and so you really gotta uh, stick together and it's nice when you can silence a crowd, you know, and it's, it's fun, it's entertaining. And I think our team, um, we just had the right mindset for it. Let's go Gina here. Hey, Chris, uh, throughout the season, many of your teammates have been asked by people like us you know, what, what you have taught them. And so I'm going to flip that question around on you. And what, what are the biggest things that you've learned from your teammates this year? And, and specifically, what's the biggest thing you've learned from, from Book this year? Um, <clears throat> man, uh, one thing about Book is he stays in kill mode all game long, you know, no matter what's going on. <laughs> if you're thinking you need to hold the ball like with like 40-some seconds left and you might be up four or five, Book going to shoot it. He gonna let it ride. That's just his mindset, which you gotta appreciate. Excuse me. And I think for my team, um, it's just we have a very fun team. You know, guys who try not to take themselves too serious. And excuse me, I think that's what's really good about our team. We um, one of the things we say before we run out on the court is, you know, you can be so serious and all that. We say have fun. <laughs> you know, have fun. And I think that's. What, uh, what keeps us focused is remembering that this is a game. You know, we, we got to go out there and enjoy ourselves. Vince in the back here. <clears throat> hey, Chris. Um, the other night on NBA TV after game two, you and Isaiah Thomas had this moment where he said he was honored to be <laughs> compared to you. Yeah. Considering the fact that there seems to be like this generational divide between a lot of the older guys and some of the younger, you know, the younger generation, does it mean something to have that type of respect and admiration from a previous generation? It, it definitely means a lot. And uh, for me, um, not just playing in the league for a long time, I've always been a student of the game. You know, since since I was a kid, growing up with my dad, watching um, Isaiah. Obviously, I was the biggest Michael Jordan fan you could uh, ever know. Um, but also my dad's two favorite players growing up was Dr. J and Iceman. You know, my dad in the two leagues that he played in, one league he wore number six and the other one he wore number 44. So uh, my appreciation for the game comes from my dad. You know, he's the first one to ever put a ball in my hands and um, I'm grateful for it. <clears throat> Palmer for one on Zoom. We're going to go with Cassidy Hubbard with ESPN. Hi, Chris. Mikael was talking about some of the dinners you hosted at your house this year for, for teammates to watch games. He also said he noticed the year before the TikToks you did with Shay and Baze and re realized just how cool you were to hang out with the younger guys. Is there anything you learned from your friendship with, with Shay and, and Baze and OKC that you applied to forming the bonds you had with the young guys here in Phoenix? Oh, man, that's a good question. Kale is like a kid himself. Um, 
But uh, I think with Shea and Bays, um, they became, you know, my extended family. Being in Oklahoma City a year without my family, uh, Bays was closer in age to Lil Chris than he was to me. You know, so him and Shea and Bays, who I still talk to on a regular, I talk to Shea about every day. Um, they they really keep you young, you know. They keep you lighthearted. They keep you having fun. And then getting here with our team in Phoenix, being away from my family once again, uh, I was grateful that the guys would even come over and eat and kick it with me, <laughs> you know. In a, in a time where um, we're so secluded because of um, the pandemic, um, it was a, a really good chance for us to bond and have these guys try vegan food every now and then. So. They ain't always love that, but we did get a lot of time together. We'll do Lisa and Eric for the final two in here. Chris, uh, obviously the Bucks treat the tomorrow's games as the must win game. And then um, when you do the pep talk in the locker room tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow, would you tell them like treat it as like a normal game or it's like the biggest test of this whole season? Yeah, you said it right there. For us, the biggest game of the year is tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, it's a must-win game for us. We got to come out with that mindset. Uh, know that they're, they're home, they're more comfortable, they'll be in front of their fans. But, um, you know, we, we got to be us. We got to be us, and we got we to gotta be the hungrier team. And so that's what we'll do. Eric in the back. Hey, Chris. Um, Sorry. I, I was just talking to Brooke. Lopez, and he, he had said, like, the idea of defense to him is, like, you try to contain someone in a box, and then they're going to break out of that box, and then you try to contain them into a different box. For you as a point guard, what what do you find enjoyable about breaking out of that box? Like, finding the things that you want when you know they want you to do certain things on certain plays? Uh, Brooke is smart. Very, very smart. Um I say this just like we play connect four, just like you play sorry. Like, this is a game. This is a game. Everybody's trying to figure out how to stop this guy, stop that guy. And usually some of the best people are the people that have counters. You know, everybody's always saying, oh, this is all you got to do. We were just talking about it on the bus. Oh, you just got to do this. If it was that easy, everybody would, you know. So um, I think for us, it's all about making adjustments. And that's why when you start out the game, you see how you guard it. And... You know, we're professionals. It's like, okay, let's do that. Let's counter with that. And that's the only reason that teams advance this far is being able to adjust and, and maneuver on the fly. Thank you, Chris. No problem. Thank you. That was Chris Paul. You the Suns don't lose this postseason when Booker shoots 42% or better. They are 9-0 and when he shoots that way. Hey, hey Book. Uh, Monty, and maybe you mentioned it after game two that you want to try to look at this game as it's 0-0 and put yourself in an urgent mindset. Obviously, you guys are up 3-1 in the Clippers series. Don't get game five. Does that inform at all how you can actually maybe something you didn't do that game that you can drum up for game three? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think there there was some games in the previous series where we didn't bring it. Um, simple as that. And not on the make or miss, didn't bring it just on, from the energy standpoint, uh, energy and effort. So, I think since that game, you know, we've picked it up in that regard and, you know, understand we can't control if we make or miss shots, but, you know, the 50-50 balls and the intensity throughout the team can always have another level. Gina here in the second row. Book, I'm going to put you in the time machine to, okay. to go back to when you were in Mississippi and going to watch Chris play in, mm -hmm. in New Orleans. Just do you have a favorite memory from a game watching him as a fan and just maybe what initially – made you a fan of his where you're wearing his shoes in high, in high school and all that stuff? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was a fan of his before that, before I got to see him live. But see, every time he got he hit a three down there in New Orleans when they used to do the CP3. And it, so that, you know, that, that used to have me hype for sure. Um, yeah, some, some really good times. Dwayne here in the front. Here we go. Uh, Devin, I wanted to just to ask about when you look at the Bucks and, and and Holiday and Middleton, what have you guys done well, you feel like, against them defense? Is it a matter of just making them work for their for their looks? What things do you feel like that you guys have done well against those two? Yeah, that's all you can do. Um, 
players of, of that talent and that caliber that, you know, score the ball as they do. You know, you can just try to make it hard on them. Um, it's not a one-person assignment. Even if Mikael or Jay is the guy starting on them, um, it has to be communicated throughout the team. So, you know, half the game is ball screens and switching out. So, you know, everybody has to be locked in. So, um, I'd say just I always talk about it, but communication amongst each other and being honest with each other and, you know, not trying to make the same mistake twice because those guys will make you pay. First started covering the team, it was questioning your defense, and you were saying, "Look, it's a five-man deal here. It's not just a one-one one deal." And now you're being praised for your competitiveness on that end. Just maybe just speak to how not necessarily how the narrative changed, but just how you're embracing that defense, that end maybe more than you did maybe earlier in your career. Or maybe you did earlier in your yeah. Career. That's what I noticed. That's what I was about to say. You know, I think I've never enjoyed getting scored on. Um, but, you know, you get to the NBA and, you know, there's there's different coverages for different teams. There's different schemes. And, you know, what I just said about our team, you know, everybody has to be on the same page. And, you know, whether one person is off or, you know, a step behind, it can, you know, put you in different rotations that you're not supposed to be in. So um, just understanding that, you know, as a team, you know, we, we, we try to communicate amongst each other and, you know, when you're going against dynamic scorers and guarding people, you want to use all five guys. Vince in the back left here. Hey, Devin. Um, you guys, I know it sounds simple, but you make your free throws. You don't turn the ball over. You don't beat yourselves. Those are usually characteristics of, like, an older veteran team. For you guys to be so young, do you feel more mature, I guess? Do you feel that compared to maybe years before where you know you're not going to beat yourself on a nightly basis? Yeah, um, I think we've we've played well, you know, down the stretch, um, especially during the the playoffs. Um, but we had some learning curves for sure. You know, we had some some talks amongst the team and being better in those last five minutes or those last two minutes. Obviously, you want to play great every possession, but you know, when it's time to lock in and not make any more silly mistakes, you know, you you want to be locked in as much as possible. And you know, starting with Coach Monty and guys like Chris. You know, you they, they stress the details of the game throughout the whole season, whether we're up 20, down a lot in a close, I mean, down a lot in the game, you know, we're still stressing the details of the game. And, you know, I think we've seen a lot of a lot of different situations. There you go, Steve, Eric, and then to Zoom. Hi, Devin. Um, what are the reasons you see for why your your group travels so well? Better than any other team, you have the best road record. I'd say we have a close team. Um, I mean, but I feel, you know, a lot of teams can say that. We spend a lot of time together. We get our laughs in together for sure daily. Um, and I don't, I don't know. There's a, there's a feeling about it. We, we enjoy. We enjoy playing on the road. And, you know, I think that brings our team together even more. I know we spend a lot of time, a lot of our free time this year, especially with the COVID protocols, spending time together. Um, not with our families on the road, just, you know, somebody hosting. You know, we're playing cards. We have 10, 10 12 guys in the room at a time. Eric? Hey, Devin. Um, I was talking to Brooke Lopez about it a little bit and then Chris a little bit about the idea of, like, thinking the game, that, like, in the first quarter you pick something up and say, like, oh, okay, if I do that again, they're going to do this. What do you feel like you've kind of learned with Chris around in doing that and, and maybe – you're not going to use it right away, but you're going to remember it down the road. Yeah, that's the I think It's the highest level of basketball. And it's, you know, for me, it's been a new experience. But, you know, it's been a joy to be a part of it and, you know, dissecting the game and doctoring the game um, in that regard. But, you know, all great teams make 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 adjustments. And at this level, that's what's going to happen. Um, so if you think you get a easy look or you think you're going to get away with something for over a quarter or over a possession is is not going to happen. Teams are going to adjust to it, and you know you have to know how to make an adjustment to their adjustment. What was there a time where like Chris picked up on something and you were like, "How do you remember that?" or like anything like that? Yeah, I mean that happens all the time. Um, I just told a story last last interview, like watching film with him. Also, like 
he will call something out that was so far away from the ball or what, what happened, and he's going to make sure he gets right back to it. He's going to rewind it, no matter if it was a minute or two minutes going in the game, and, and, and stress it. So, you know, those are the details that I'm talking about that, you know, we, we've learned can make or break a game for you in this time of the year. You know, you need, need every game you can get. Palmer, last two questions on Zoom. Next is going to be Cassidy Hubbard with ESPN. Final question will be Richard Science. Evan, we saw Julius Randle recall the story in the Players' Tribune how Kobe would head to a gym anytime he arrived to a city on the road, no matter what time. When you think about the extra work you put in that you get praised for when it comes to your work ethic and, and what the cameras don't see, what are the times that you think about? Most of my life, um, to be completely honest, uh, you know, I don't really do too too many cameras in my workout or, you know, feel the need to portray it to the world when I'm working and when I'm getting in the gym. Um, and just understanding, you know, you, you can't cheat yourself. You can't cheat the steps to, to get to where we're at today and what we're competing for. So, um, you know, a lot of it goes unseen, but... You know, once once you make it to a level, it's you know you're gonna have to you're gonna have to perform, and they'll tell then. On a question, it's Richard Sines with Fox Ten. Hey Devin, uh, you you guys kind of talked about you know after winning Game One that you knew the Bucks were gonna come out strong in Game Two. I would imagine that's gonna be amplified for this game, considering you know now you guys are in Milwaukee. Uh, how important is it to kind of weather that storm early, or do you come out with the mindset of you try to hit them early? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's the finals. You know, this is, we're playing for the prize. I don't think, you know, there's not, there's going to be a storm that we haven't seen. You know, those guys are bringing in, we're going to bring it. And, you know, that's, that's that. Thank you. Thank you.